one of Poundland's better offerings at the moment. It is a solar powered crackle globe. And this thing has a base with a little solar panel inside. It's got a string of 15 LEDs. I could count them. That would be pedantic. I should turn it on. And it has the globe itself that Bainet caps on. To mount it into the ground, I'm just going to try and stuff these. These have clearly just been wound round someone's hand and then stuffed in. Let's straighten them out and, uh, and kind of make them different and stuff them in. Slightly less organised. Uh, it also comes instantly with this uh, clipped together base that then goes into these holes in the bottom. So you can stick it in the ground so it doesn't roll away in the wind. So let's turn the light off and see what this looks like. So uh, this could be quite dark. I'll turn the exposure off and turn this off. It's not bad. I mean, it's not super duper mega bright, but it's OK. It's uh, sparkly points of light. The camera is actually more or less catching what it looks like. And it's quite nice because the uh, projected image from well, you can see that if light shines through it, you get that sort of that crackle project effect. And uh, to a degree, you get that very slightly from these LEDs, although they're, they're quite diffuse. They're not like focus point sources. So watch your eyes. The light is about to come back. The light is back. Let's take it apart and see how hackable it is and how easy it would be to make it more reliable. Because things do go wrong. You'd think that because this globe is going to shed water over the outside and it's going to drip through these drip holes in the bottom, that it wouldn't pose a problem of water build up inside. But in reality, you get condensation forming inside globes like this and then it can drip. And if it lands in the solar panel, it wicks down the side. If it lands in the switch, it goes into the switch and causes it to corrode. Humidity is a terrible thing. But there are ways you can bomb proof these lights. I shouldn't really use the word bomb for a glass globe, should I? It sounds a bit destructive. So let's take the screw out. We have the classic little circuit board, which I'll guess contains a four pin chip. We have a AAA cell. What capacity is it marked? It is marked three 200 milliamp hour. That's useful enough. It's nice that it's got the little battery holder like that. And we'll get the circuit board out. One thing, if you wanted to make this fairly resilient, one of the first things to do would be to just get a solder yarn and bypass that switch completely because the switches are notorious for rusting inside. And when they do, they make a bad connection. So this is using the standard. I'm going to have to use my magnifying glass here to see this. It's using a brown... Oh, that's a really small band in that inductor. Uh, I think it's 15 micro, Henry, but I'm not really sure. I'd have to take a closer look at that. But it's using the classic system that it's got the little inductor, it's got the little classic four pin chip to boost the voltage up, and that's more or less it. So things to improve, you could seal this solar panel better, you could use that approach of getting the uh, weather resistant tape and putting it over the top of it, which would seal the edge there, because that's where water is like to get in. You could also drizzle glue down it. Uh, does this have the little board around it? I think it does. Because water wicks under these solar panels, let's zoom down a bit, they tend to etch with the laser. Before they put the final layer of uh, lacquer on, they tend to etch the laser a little border around the side so that if electrolytic action occurs and the water starts uh, causing it to corrode from the side, it stops and it reaches that little laser line because the lacquer has gone through it. But it's not always completely infallible. The other option here is you could potentially put a slightly bigger solar panel on this, and then you could up the size of the battery. And then you could add more LEDs. You could do so many things with this. Right, tell you what, it's fairly predictable, but I shall draw out the circuitry of this little uh, circuit board so we can see it and we can see what can be hacked on the circuit board itself. Let's explore. It's a very standard circuit. In fact, it's the second circuit shown in the data sheet for the YX8050 which is this one here. There are variations. You can add a uh, cadmium sulfide photo cell if you wanted to turn on just a little bit later. Um, notable things. This data sheet also gives the inductor sizes and how much current flows. So by using a lower value inductor, you get higher current and it can go from 10 microhenries, 40 milliamps, up to 100 microhenries, 3.3 milliamps. In reality, many of the British lights with the tiny little button cells 
they go up to 150 or even 330 microhenry, so they just act as a dull marker light, but they last a lot longer than the battery. In this case, it's 27 microhenry, and that gives an output current of approximately 15 milliamps, equivalent to what it'd be. Um, let's take a look at this. So here's the switch with its three positions. Those are the two contacts you just blob over with a solder joint if you wanted to bypass it completely. The other option is to squirt some oil into it and then jiggle it backwards and forwards to coat everything. But to be honest, they always rust and give problems. The circuit board itself, uh, if you want to protect against uh, water ingress damage, you can get either clear lacquer or nail varnish which is clear lacquer in a way, and you can just paint over the whole back. If you do that, make sure you gunge loads around these uh, terminals here because it's not uncommon for uh, water to build up and then cause corrosion between these terminals and the chip. The other option here is to squish Vaseline in um, and just smear the whole circuit board with Vaseline. And with the battery, Vaseline's a good option uh, or any other grease because if you smear the battery contacts thickly with grease uh, and then stick the battery in, water just simply can't get to the metals to cause corrosion because the corroded battery terminals is a common issue. The battery connects here. There's a set of common negatives and the LED connects here to the switched output. Really, I should just go straight to the schematic, shouldn't I? Changing this inductor, uh, if you live in a super sunny climate, then you could change that to a lower value. You could go down to the 10 microhenries for that. Uh, for the 40 milliamp output. Even the 15 microhenry would be an improvement. Likewise, if you live in super dark climate, you could increase the value to 100 microhenry or something, which would make the lights a lot dimmer, but they'd last a lot longer in the battery. Let's take a look at the schematic. So here's the chip, the YX8050. There is the nickel metal hydride cell, and it is charged from the solar panel via an internal diode in that chip. So the current flows from the solar panel through the diode and charges the cell if that switch is closed. If the switch is not closed, uh, it won't charge it, which is a shame because in a way it would be nice to be able to turn the switch off and not have the light running, but it uh, still uh, charges. If you want that, you can actually add your own diode. You can put a diode over there and it will charge the battery even when the switch is off. But you have to be careful because there's no current control, no charge control, so it will just keep charging. Uh, and if you have it out for a long amount of time and bright sunshine, it could actually damage the cell by over trickle charging it. There's the inductor, and when the unit detects that the charge voltage here has dropped below a certain level, it turns on a circuit that pulses a transistor inside that switches this connection of the inductor down to the zero volt rail. Now, normally, this uh, is at the lithium, uh, uh, lithium nickel metal hydride cell voltage. You couldn't use lithium in this for this reason. Uh, and that's not enough to pass straight through the LEDs. But when this pulses, when it gets dark enough, initially this end is positive and this end is pulled negative and it builds up a magnetic field in the inductor. Then when it turns off, this end goes positive and this end goes negative and it effectively goes in series with the uh, nickel metal hydride cell and that is enough to pass current through the LED. A common failure in these is the LED starting to conduct and when you've got a lot of them in a string like this, one failing in a resistive state will start actually discharging the cell even while it's trying to charge in the daylight. Um, that can be quite annoying. Other things it does, it does seem to have a low battery cutoff. It seems to monitor the voltage in this pin and if it goes below about one volt it will turn off to stop the nickel metal hydride cell being discharged completely. That is about it. This is the main bit you can change here, the little inductor. So what I did was I cut out the existing LEDs and I replaced it with my own. I replaced it with 30 blue LEDs and I shall show you that. So I'll take off the exposure. I, shall, I think this is on. I'm not really sure if it's on. Did I leave it on? Yes, I did. And it gives much more coverage inside. It's just more points of light. You could theoretically put a lot more in, but there is a point that there, if there are too many, it's going to block the sunlight from getting to the solar panel. But that's quite an improvement over what it was before. Um, you don't have to limit yourself to how many they decided you could have inside it. You could stuff this with 100 if you wanted it. Uh, particularly if you... We're in a sunny climate and you reduce the size of that inductor and also enough sunlight, sh sunshine, sunshade, that's a good, sunlight, sunshine, was going to get uh, past the LEDs that you've clumped up in here 
to the solar panel. Uh, I suppose, really, uh, watch your eyes, the light's coming back here. I suppose, really, you could uh, also just go to town with the grease uh, or Vaseline and just push it down the side of that solar panel because if you've squished it all down the side of that, then there's going to be much less chance of uh, water getting down there because it's already full. So many things you can do to make these last better. Um, and also they're completely hackable. You could also add a little connector. Again, smother it in grease because uh, if you don't, it, it will it self-corrode. I've experienced that. But uh, there's many ways you can hack these and make them your own. But there we go. Uh, overall, I would say that this is actually a really nice light. It's got a nice big crackle globe. It's got a fairly decent cell in it. It's completely hackable and has the potential. There's a bit more space. You could put the slightly bigger solar panel in and you could adjust that inductor to make it uh, more suited to where you live, whether it had a lot of sunlight or, in the case of, well, the Isle of Man, Loads of sunshine at the moment, but not much during winter. And that's when, you know, it'd be quite useful to hack it just to glow at a low level during the winter nights. But there we go. It's not bad at all. Uh, what does Poundland call this? They call it a crackle ground light. Uh, it's pretty good. It's not bad at all.